When we talk about Punjabi culture, what comes in your mind? Whenever we're talking about Punjabi culture, there's a very specific characteristic image that pops up. Dhoti, pagdi, char panya, lassiya. That's very ordinary folk life. We are modernized, especially in the day and age of technology, and our lives have become so vast that we're losing the touch with our culture. When the Britishers came here, they weren't really interested in preserving the value of Punjabi heritage. What they wanted to do was they wanted to. Be divide everyone it was drilled into the minds of ordinary punjabi people what elements we see now that has been lost very basic the language many of us don't know how to read or write it there are very few people who can understand bulle shah or other punjabi poets if you don't understand that you don't understand the folk wisdom so the only time really you know like folk songs folk form of art comes to public discourse is when coax studio picks up on something Ahmed Farooq how are you I'm good I'm good how are you I'm doing pretty good when we talk about Punjabi culture right what comes in your mind um it's a very interesting question so uh, I was thinking about this today as I was preparing my points for this podcast um so when we when we think about Punjabi culture the first thing that comes to our mind is the punjabi village culture or like at least in my mind uh it's the village culture of punjab you know uh, dhotis and uh, pagdis uh, ob- obviously pagdi has a different connotation to our in the indian punjab or with the sikh punjabis but uh, with uh, pakistani side or muslim punjabis it, it has a different connotation um so you know those sort of things you know we the manjes come in uh, char paniya <laughs> lassiya all those kind of things come into mind um but one thing uh, the, uh, that doesn't come to mind is the urban side of punjabi uh, life you know punjabi culture uh, the literary uh, traditions that were go- brewing in the urban centers of punjab um or still continue to do so uh, till this date so that is something that we don't know a lot about uh, that has uh, been lost somewhere uh in the globalization process uh, all over the world and uh, i think that's very interesting because i personally don't don't know quite a lot about it mm-hmm. uh but when when we talk about punjabi culture we automatically go to those green fields village life and that's what pops up into my mind uh but i'm trying to change the perspective on that uh, even in my own mind uh and let's see where mm. that takes me or takes us what do you mean by that trying to change the perspective of punjabi culture um so this is this is something that you know it's a recent sort of discovery in my own mind as well but like the point behind this is that when we talk about punjabi culture um it's it's very raw uh you know we we talk about the vernacular culture we talk about the culture of an ordinary person uh living in punjab but you know there's an there's a whole different side to uh, punjabi history punjabi culture which is related to you know let's say intellectual processes um literary processes the urban life how that was going on um during the various years of history or still does um so how does that part of punjabi life uh, you know fair and uh, even you know whenever we're talking about punjabi culture days we're talking about punjabi culture there's a very specific um characteristic image that pops up um and uh, that's very like ordinary folk like but there's another element because like punjabi is a very rich language punjabi has had very rich traditions mm-hmm. um even on literary side intellectual side side philosophical side that aspect of punjabi history punjabi heritage um has been lost somewhere i feel like and uh, that's where i would like to work um in the coming days in the coming weeks and hopefully through this podcast like we can uh instill this question in the mind of people who are interested uh in punjabi heritage punjabi history punjabi culture i know when we talk about culture you know food always comes in our mind um I don't know if I should say this or not but um do you think the food aspects going to change also let's say like we don't eat beef 
uh, or pork yeah. in the Punjabi culture. Do you think that's going to change? Um, that depends. I mean, like in Pakistani Punjab, we eat beef a lot. We don't eat pork, uh, but we do eat beef a lot. Uh, we, uh, I think our diet predominantly has converted actually, like it has changed, especially in cities. It has become very meat oriented. Um, I have mm-hmm. grown up in a very small city uh, and like my family has been, uh, has very like strong rural roots. So like I grew up on a diet, which was not very meat intensive, but now I live in Lahore and I see that people are eating meat all the time. Um, it gets me <laughs> sick. Honestly, like, I, I, I mean, I like meat, but like, I can't eat it seven days uh, in a week. They put meat in like uh, vegetarian stuff, so like chole meat. So like one of my friends, he came from UK to visit here. Um, um, right. And he, he, he was a vegetarian. So like, we had to find some option uh, for him, like food option where, you know, like we can go and have a dinner. And eventually we had to settle for a, for a pizza hut where we got a veggie pizza. That's it. That's what wow. we got in Lahore. Uh, but like, you know, we do have cholas. We do have, you know, like non-meat stuff. But, you know, it's not like a... It's, it's getting pushed to periphery somehow. And a very meat-oriented diet is like coming to front in major urban centers, especially. Um, so yes, there has been a change. Um, definitely there has been a change in context of Punjabi culture um, sabziya you know like people can't eat sabziya you know they, they they make such you know bad face when you, you offer them that you know like, mm. wait wait uh, <laughs> bangan. but it's combined with <laughs> but with bangan with uh, beef it looks good though right <laughs> I don't know I have never eaten bangan with beef uh, and I and I hope I never have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went to this uh, Pakistani people's house one time, and they put literally everything with meat yeah. inside, like uh, chicken gosht with uh, I don't know, no, not gosht, but yeah. s- like they put gosht with uh, dal, you know, gosht with uh, sabzi, gosht with uh, chole, and it's <laughs> like, bro, that's a lot of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like people like. This this is a very big change that I've observed uh, when I came to Lahore. That, you know, people are just mm-hmm. like eating meat all the time. Um, whereas like in like rural setting, you wouldn't do that. Like, you know, you would maybe eat once a week um, in other cases. Why is that though? Why is like Lahore is more meat oriented um, diet? I don't know. Uh, I think I can just speculate at this point. Um, I think like with regards to Lahore, uh, Lahore has been a metropolitan um for a very long time unfortunately now Lahore is like sort of losing that character um of being a metropolitan Mm -hmm. but uh historically Lahore has been a metropolitan for thousands of years people from all over the world have come uh to this part of the world and like this this is this is a sort of tradition um uh that meat is considered something special uh in this part of Punjab like you know on special occasions you would eat meat uh you wouldn't offer bhindi uh, to a guest, you know, you you would offer them a pakara or like a uh, murgi or something like that. So you know, uh, those sort of foods um, uh, got you know like involved with the Lahori cuisine, and they started getting sold in the uh, in the markets in the bazaars. So like all the meat recipes made their way to bazaar because like they were novelties, they were coming from different part of the world, and um, then when the ordinary people uh, stopped cooking much at home or like they also like shifted to meat uh, oriented diet the options that they found in the market were mostly meat oriented that's my hypothesis I don't know how correct that is um, but it's my observation and uh, it's what I think like you know like meat associated with special occasions uh, made its way to the marketplaces um, and like sort of the vegetarian food or like vegetables did make their ways, you know, like to marketplaces, but not in a very royal sense. Um, mm-hmm. Interestingly, like, you know, just something that I, something that came to my mind uh, talking about this. Paneer is a very famous thing in India, I suppose. It is. It's my favorite. In Pakistani Punjab, you would hardly find paneer anywhere. 
uh, so oh, I really? went to Sindh actually, and there like pe- a lot of people eat mm, paneer, I suppose. But in Pakistani Punjab, people don't really eat paneer. Uh, you ask people, have you ever eaten paneer? They don't know what paneer is. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you know, like that's one thing as well. So you know, food changes. Um, this part of the world has shifted to meat-based diet. Um, there are many other social theories that you know one can evaluate in order to understand why meat has become so important. But I think that would take too much time, and I don't have enough expertise to comment on that. Well, do you think you know we are modernized? You know, especially in the day and age of uh, you know technology and AI, yeah. and our lives have become so vast that we're losing the touch with you know our roots, our culture. and how is that going to affect our coming generations it's it's a very broad question that you've asked um definitely modernization has had an impact on the way um indigenous cultures are shaping up all over the world not just punjabi culture uh this wave of like one universal global culture uh has sort of like proven to be um you know a negative force for indigenous cultures all across the globe uh but when we talk about punjabi culture uh specifically within the context of pakistani punjab if i may um this mm-hmm. tendency of like leaving the culture behind leaving the heritage behind uh in punjab goes back to colonial times and um, you know like there are a lot of different theories as to why that has happened some i'll talk about them uh some of those will be backed by facts some of them will be you know like sort of speculations uh but the but the idea is general idea is that when the britishers came here um they weren't really interested in preserving um the value of punjabi heritage or for that matter of fact any part of india and uh, what they wanted to do was they were they wanted to divide everyone they wanted to like sort of make everyone feel like uh you know their cultures are not very good you know um they are not let's say human enough uh these cultures these mm-hmm. ways of living are uh sort of um let's say subhuman if you may and there there was this idea instilled um specifically like within the context of punjab very badly like it, it was drilled into the minds of ordinary punjabi people um they were they were forced they were made to think that you know their culture is inferior um the the, the colonial culture is better it's more civilized and uh, if you look at uh, the po- the pre partition uh, bureaucratic system in this part of the world uh, and that continues to this date in pakistan unfortunately i'm not so sure about india or indian punjab uh, but that is the case in pakistani punjab so the state setup may be judiciary bureaucracy or uh, you know like other state institutions they are still trained in the way that the britishers used to train their uh, officials and the mm-hmm. reason why britishers used to train their officials in a certain way was that they wanted to put down the local population you know they wanted to m- make the local population think that their cultures are not good enough and that way it was easy to you know like sort of rule them and uh, it you know f- fit it it did fit very well uh into their plans of divide and rule as well because they were not only making people realize that their culture is somehow inferior to the british culture or the colonial culture but they were also like you know dividing people across other lines as well you know making them think that oh our culture is better than let's say that group or you know that group would think that our culture is better than the other group so you know like there were there were multiple lines of division uh which were created by the british during the colonial times and unfortunately in pakistan uh that has continued to this date um and uh, the state setup still treats punjabi culture uh as if you know it's 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 a culture of uncivilized people uh it's a culture of right. uh, you know like people who are not um let's say intellectual enough uh, good enough you know this is some sort of some subhuman culture so i think in pakistani punjab context it's 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 something which goes 
almost like century and a half back. Yeah, I think um, I was having this conversation the other day with my sister-in-law and then we, we, we had a conversation that, you know, Britishers didn't leave India just like that. You know, first of all, they ruled our country for such a long time, you know, such a long period of time. And then there wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't make any sense for them to just leave without, you know, putting their culture in the roots of India. You know, they made sure that their culture is part of our culture too. You know, if... uh, I don't know if you know this, but the English we speak in India, in Pakistan, we speak British English. Whatever, you know, the school systems that we went through, you know, that we're going to, it's part of like, you know, British school system um, area. But it was, they just, leave, they didn't leave India, you know, just, you know, like that. This is very interesting that, you know, people had to change their religion, you know, when partition happened. Um, You know, adopting a new religion, you know, all over again, um, how was the process? For example, let's say I'm Sikh Punjabi, like, right? Mm. And I I have to move to Pakistan and I have to change my whole religion, right? Mm. Was the process easy okay um so i think uh, there were different types of conversions um that were going on so like first one was like the one that i just mentioned uh that the entire village of hindus converted to islam and you know like in order to save their lives and then they disappeared uh, as soon as they got the chance they went to indian punjab um mm. so that was that you know like people were trying to save their lives uh, in groups or as an individual, but they were doing in order to like survive for a while and then they were planning on escaping to the other part um, and, you know, going back to their own religion uh, or their own cultural values, whatever. Another type was for women uh, who were left behind on either side. Now, for them, it was a lifelong survival. They couldn't just, you know, pretend for a day or a week or a month that they had converted, they had to convert, uh, like for real, if they wanted to survive, because um, otherwise it would be curtains for them. They would either be killed or, you know, something even worse. So many conversions took place in that uh, background backdrop as well, like uh, women having to convert to, let's say, Sikhism or Hinduism or Islam, depending upon the side of Punjab that you were on. Another example is, you know, some very young kids who, you know, who were displaced during those times um, and they were adopted by, let's say, one family or the other family. So they grew up in their adoptive family's religion rather than, you know, uh, their birth family's religion. So a lot of that was happening. Um, So there were different contexts uh, to why people were converting their religions. And... um, so to the point, you know, when, when you're going to the other side, it's not, bec- you know, it's not because that you're going to the side where there are people from different religion. You're going to the other side because there are people with similar religion uh, as yours on the other mm-hmm. side. That's mm-hmm. why you're going. So people who converted were the ones who were either left behind on the side that they were uh, a minority in um, or for, for a little while or for um, you know, longer periods. So those were the people who were forced to convert. The people who were running away uh, or successfully did go to the other part of Punjab uh, did not have to convert or, you know, they, they could practice their original religion. So when we talk about uh, Punjabi culture in Pakistan side, uh, what elements, you know, we see now that has been lost? Okay, um, so in terms of like specifically in terms of Punjabi culture in Pakistan, I think the list is very long um, because like starting from the very basic, the language, uh, I think Pakistani Punjab has been at a, at a very, let's say, unfortunate position uh, that we have lost our language 
uh, we we do speak uh, we do speak the language uh, in pakistani punjab uh, the punjabis they do speak punjabi but many of us don't know how to read or write it uh, fortunately the script is very similar to the one that is used by urdu so you know like people can go about it but um, we can't really read complex things in punjabi so the shamukhi script let's say uh, punjabi has two different scripts mm. one is gurmukhi one is shamukhi right. Uh, so Shamukhi is like a Persian Arabic kind of script, and then Gurmukhi is the uh, local uh, uh, script, which is like much closer to Devanagari and other local scripts. So, <clears throat> with regards to Shamukhi, like Gurmukhi script, um, I think there are hardly any people in Pakistani Punjab other than like religious Sikhs who can read it. Um, I am one of them who can read some basic Kurmukhi Punjabi, uh, but like I had to learn on my own. Um, they, there isn't mm. like any sort of avenue in Pakistan on or like in schools or otherwise where you can learn it. I think uh, at best there there are a few courses offered in some of the universities where you could learn it. Um, it's banned the language is banned in colleges also you can't learn like in school system no it's not i know you yeah. said that like yeah 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 so like it's not like banned banned um it's just like looked down upon really 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 aggressively uh so when i when i was talking about the schools the situation in schools is that like schools have their own rules right like schools um right. private schools have their own rules so they can enforce that so it's it's a representation of the general attitude that people have towards punjabi language um you know that it's not a good language it's a bad language it's this it's that it's been looked yeah. down upon on, on a state yeah. level it's not banned it's abandoned um like mm. the state doesn't care for it like in 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 pakistan even like um if i give you an example if you go to sindh you will find out that around 90% of the sign boards are in english and sindhi they're not in urdu so you know similarly in indian states uh, you know wherever you go you you see the sign boards in local language uh, you know like even in punjab the sign boards are in punjabi the gurmukhi punjabi script in punjab that's not the case like it's it's english and urdu so like the urdu is 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 enforced uh like sort of enforced in the sense like it's 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 been pushed on people uh because mm-hmm. like punjabi has been abandoned so like urdu has been adopted as this new language um which people relate to and consider their own um but like there's also very interesting history uh behind that like why people consider urdu as their own language but uh, that's another topic um but like generally like punjabi language is considered a language of uh, people with low intellects uh, you know people who mm. don't have good things to say uh, people who are backwards so that's like the very first thing the very core thing the mother language mother tongue uh, we have lost out on in pakistan um the punjabi that we speak is a very vernacular version of punjabi um you know it's like the ordinary folk punjabi um the literary punjabi the the complex poetic punjabi has been lost to common people uh there are very few people who can understand bulle shah or other punjabi poets um you know people do pretend that they understand bulle shah and other you know like sufi saints or sufi poets or other like sufi like not just sufi but like other punjabi writers and poets but they don't really understand it um so that's one aspect that like we have lost out on uh, in terms of punjabi culture then the other aspect is like the festivals um so punjabis are known for having a lot of festivals especially like in indian punjab uh mm-hmm. pakistanis lost out on a lot of those festivals because naturally like a lot of sikh population and a lot of hindu population that was living in these parts of punjab uh migrated um to indian punjab so all the religious festivals which were associated with these those two religions were lost uh to this part of punjab uh, naturally 
um you know like besakhi used to be a very big festival over here now people don't celebrate it same with lodi um same with you know dashera ya dusara uh, which is a hindu festival um these were very commonly celebrated festivals in this part of punjab as well which got lost um in pakistani punjab or like pakistan in general but specifically in pakistani punjab um we have lost other cultural festivals or cultural um festivities as well you know like there's a very um big culture there used to be a very big culture around melas uh in pakistani punjab uh which is slowly getting lost um you know back in the day it was very common occurrence now you have to find you have to seek actively seek a mela out um you know most of the melas that are conducted are you know like related with sufi shrines and stuff like that um but you know otherwise the normal melas which used to you know be conducted in villages and cities are becoming a thing of past um there are mm-hmm. there are many reasons which we can talk about uh, later why this is happening but like this is one of the key elements um uh, which we have lost another one is essentially also like the art and the music um that we are losing currently in pakistani punjab folk music folk art folk science like you know like folk ideas folk philosophies we losing all of that because we can't really understand punjabi um and uh, we we have sort of this disconnect with because we don't completely understand the language uh we do understand the vernacular mm-hmm. but uh, especially within the young young lot you know people my age uh we don't really understand complex punjabi so if you don't understand that you don't understand the folk wisdom uh, which is coming with it so the only time really you know like folk songs folk form of art comes to public discourse is when coke studio picks up on something uh <laughs> so you know that's the only way where punjabi sort of folk culture is living um, nowadays yeah in pakistani punjab especially within the context of like urban or modernized youth like myself um in in, in some far off villages etc you can still find aspects of it but in urban centers not at all it's pretty interesting that you picked up the topic of uh, you know coke studios <laughs> uh it's pretty interesting you know last year they brought the uh indian musicians you know with uh, pakistani musicians to kind of have like you know indo pakistan fusion and you know these these are the ways that you can uh still bring the culture out and then you know ma- maintain that um purity in the culture you know through music through art mm. um I will go back to what you just said that we are forgetting the roots of the language the shamukhi and gurmukhi language. I want to know a little bit about the history of it you know how these languages were created. Okay um so like it's I I I can give you a brief overview as like I'm not an expert on the subject but like I'll give you a brief uh, overview. So um generally with shamukhi script shamukhi script is the older script um most of the sufi saints uh, you know starting from let's say baba farid uh, use mm-hmm. this sort of language and script uh, to you know s- convey their message to say what their thoughts were and um, you know this was being used um uh, in punjab by mostly like muslim punjabis they brought this script around somewhere around 11th to 12th century i'm not exactly sure but like i think this is the time frame when this um, script comes into existence um and like generally if we talk about gurmukhi script uh, it's generally considered that uh, guru angad dev ji um canonized this language this script um he utilized several uh, local scripts uh, which were already in use to like sort of standardize them uh and then you know like mm-hmm. the gurmukhi script came into existence so this is the this is like a brief history of these two scripts um shamukhi is an older one uh but like there were other scripts as well which were going around the local scripts out of which like gurmukhi script has born 
um but like officially or like in this current format that we know gurmukhi script some bob was born somewhere around like 16th century during 16th century have you seen any similarities or differences between the punjabi culture from india side and pakistan side um yes i think uh, one of the biggest uh, differences would be religion uh that's that's like very obvious uh, stating the obvious right uh but like my my primary exposure to indian punjab is uh through punjabi films um so you know i can only comment um uh keeping that in mind like what my exposure is i think like one of the big factors uh that we see uh, one of the big differences that we see between two sides of punjab as i alluded to earlier as well that it's my opinion that for indian punjabis like punjabi identity is more important uh it means something to them uh, so they own it uh, they 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 you know like they have a they have an interest in protecting the punjabi identity um, the punjabi aspect of their identity mm-hmm. pakistani punjabis on the other hand side don't have any incentive to do so really um we uh, you know like yeah we, we don't really have any incentive like if you think about it uh from the perspective you know like you keep in mind that you know we have been colonized we have been fed this poison that you know like our culture our culture is somehow you know like not good enough it's not civilized enough uh that unconscious wiring of brains being done over like decades and generations we don't really find any value in like protecting it that's my analysis um uh that you know pakistani punjabis don't really sort of they're not really grateful about their culture and they don't really see um any urgent need to protect it I think I think it's the same is happening in Punjab side it's because I've realized is like my cousins go to school right mm. they they speak hindi yeah. over there you know I think um even if I'm not wrong the news were spread out that Punjabis you know it's considered to be banned mm. over there in schools uh cuz they want to push you no know, same thing you know colonization aspect you know more english yeah. you know more hindi um but i think it's up to us to preserve that um and one interesting aspect that i've realized is that the punjabi culture is more adaptive in the western culture i think it's also like coming out of the fact that when people go abroad they have some interest in like preserving their identity um i think it right. comes out of that need uh that you know people stay true to their roots they 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 miss their culture they want to you know keep it alive um they want to you know like sort of create a different niche for themselves um uh, in the foreign land and culture helps in a great way it also helps connecting with other people who are coming from similar parts um of the world mm-hmm. so i think it's a, it's it's a good social tool for people um you know to like sort of keep that alive in foreign lands and that's my opinion what do you think moving forward how we can preserve that in pakistan i know you're preserving through you know social media like you know you have a page uh uh versapur but what are other factors that we can do especially youngsters can do these days <sighs> it's 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 a very um it's a very difficult question um i think no one really has the right answer to this question um if i may uh i think when i think about it the more i think about it the more bleak the situation gets um uh, unfortunately because in pakistan like you have to understand uh the reasons why this is happening um you know like why people are so callous towards punjabi culture this is not the case with sindhis or let's say with pashtuns or with baloch mm-hmm. um or even like with other ethnic groups in pakistan it's 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 a specific problem with pakistani punjabis um and um, you know like there there are several reasons for it there is there are historical reasons for it um that you know now this is an opinion that i heard somewhere 
um someone was telling the story that punjab was one of the last regions that the britishers were able to conquer mm-hmm. um in this part of the world uh and they were very pissed off on punjabis so that they made sure that punjabis are doubly colonized uh you know they installed a layer of urdu and then this installed a layer of english on top of that so like they relegated punjabi culture punjabi language to a third degree uh or a third league kind of a uh kind of a way of living so that's like deeply rooted um in our um dna if you may uh, especially when people start to become more urbanized you know or modern they you know they see that punjabi culture is not compatible with the modernity because the idea is coming from that colonized past um mm-hmm. so they are like okay you know like we need to move away from this um another reason is essentially that you know because of the pre partition politics that were going on which have continued to sort of brew in pakistan um which have essentially created this disdain towards local and indigenous culture because somehow it's equated to be anti islam um that's a very big part of it uh, why many aspects of punjabi culture are being lost especially the ones which are associated with let's say festivities and music and art um so that's another factor and the third factor i think the most lethal one uh, because these the, the other two factors have been here for decades now um uh, but mm-hmm. the, the third factor which is extremely lethal is the poverty uh it's the economic situation economic plight of the people living in this part of the world um pakistan is as you know is going through one of the worst inflations in its history um and indian culture or subcontinent culture south asian culture punjabi culture is very expensive if you if you think about it it's very expensive to like you know have those lavish weddings have those you know like yeah. festivals it it takes quite a lot of financial resource to do that um back in the day they like people were connected uh people were more like you know gelled with each other there was a sense of community so whenever a wedding was due you know people supported each other so even when people did not really have a lot of money uh they were able to like sort of do that but now combined with historic inflation um and the fact that people are not closely linked to each other because the cultural connects have you know like deteriorated uh within the population of pakistani punjab it has become really difficult for people to like sort of uphold culture anymore um so i think this this one is like a lethal extremely lethal um uh, factor which is eradicating culture you know like mm-hmm. never before really uh social factors like colonization or um you know religious um beliefs um are something that culture can deal with i think poverty is something that it can't deal with um so when we talk about like how we can improve it for the coming generations i think the first the very first aspect would be to improve the economy uh i think um even with like indian punjab like the economic situation has deteriorated over the last few decades um so like this this economy thing uh is a, is is a very important factor and uh, it needs to improve so as soon as that improves like you know we have to understand it in the context of maslow's hierarchy of needs uh when people are at right at the bottom they don't really understand the value of culture uh you can't lecture them that culture is important because you know they can't really feed themselves at that point so um that becomes very difficult so i think it's very important that's... yeah so it's very important that people understand this um and you know like before that it's important that their economic situation gets better so that's one uh, the other thing is like you know like you have to re- revisit the education system um you have to include punjabi language so like in other provinces of pakistan uh, i'm not sure about india but in other provinces of pakistan the predominant provincial language is taught in schools it's compulsory till like 10th grade uh you have to pass the exams in those languages uh, otherwise you know you can't get the degree um uh, in punjab it's not that 
um it's not compulsory schools don't teach it people are not interested what are those languages so like for example in sindh uh, you have to like you know you have to learn sindhi uh, there is pashto mm-hmm. uh, you know there's balochi um you know there are other languages as well so like you have to learn these languages right um because you're tested on these languages you people know how to read them people know how to write them um but in punjab like you know i think there are like a couple of departments in university of punjab or some other universities where you can learn punjabi or take punjabi as a course um but on like school level college level um uh, punjabi is not compulsory so like very 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 few people uh take it as an elective um mm-hmm. yeah that's like you have to revisit the education system uh you have to include punjabi language in there uh you have to make sure that people relate to it like now punjabi the case of punjabi is very interesting because if you come to pakistan i think almost everyone can understand punjabi as a language um you know like because punjabi is a very important part of media uh, punjabi is spoken all over pakistani television pakistani films you can hear punjabi language here and there um but the problem is that it's 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 the it's that vernacular version of punjabi it's that like you know common folk version of punjabi um which is not necessarily associated with the cult the rich culture the intellect the the philosophies the um the other aspects of a culture um they are not present in that language you know <laughs> well this is amazing um it's pretty interesting to see you know youngsters like you are striving to place the punjabi culture in pakistan is striving to preserve the punjabi culture in pakistan and um really appreciate you know you coming on the show and shedding some light on this so thank you again <laughs>